Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Hey, we're back with more bite-sized business advice on Harmonious at Lunch. We got a special guest with us today, Kate. Kate Gilbert, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited. So, well, I'm excited and not excited because what we're talking about is how to use social media to not make yourself miserable. And just thinking about it, I'm already miserable. So I'm hoping you can help me out a little bit with this topic. (laughs) Okay. Well, I definitely can. I mean, I think the first problem a lot of people have is they are tying their results to, they think that the results on social media, especially like even of a particular post, you work real hard on a particular post, you post it, and then you're like, nobody liked it, nobody paid any attention, I'm wasting my time, all these other people are more successful than me this means I'm not going to be successful. And maybe even I'm not that great a person. Nobody likes me. So (laughs) we have to like, really, people really go down that spiral. So we have to stop that. So like, Brandon, let me ask you a question. Have you ever played like a video game? Like, have you ever played like Candy Crush or? I have. Yes. My my video game days are behind me, but yes, I, I know what a video game is. We'll say that. Okay. All right. So if you lost a level of Candy Crush, would you think, oh, I'm a lousy person and this means I'm really dumb? No, but if I only get two likes on a post, I mean, I I might go there. That might be my default setting. (laughs) Okay. But the reality is, is that like phone games are run by algorithms. So is social media. And, you know, sometimes they make it real easy to win a level. Sometimes they make it real hard to the point that you think you have to pay to win. So we can't let it mean more than it actually does about ourselves. Let's also like keep in mind that there are people who have millions of followers who don't do well. There's a particular example of this woman um, a few years back. She was an influencer and she had like 2.6 million followers and she needed to sell 36 t-shirts to start a clothing line. She couldn't sell 36 t-shirts. So I don't have 2.6 million followers. I'm pretty sure I could sell 36 t-shirts. So you can't let, (laughs) yeah, you can't let like those numbers actually mean anything. They don't actually determine the success of your business. So obviously we want our posts to do well, but we need to look at what we did, try to look at it as with curiosity and like as scientists and be like, okay, did this not do well because I did a still photo or um, I didn't show my face or was it the time or was it something else that happened that day and start to experiment. And if we can get into that experimentation and playfulness mode, then we'll stop taking it so personally. Yeah, I, that's really good advice. And I think that's, um, it's something a lot of people get caught up in. I, myself, I just admitted to it. And I was I was kidding, but also very serious. Like, you you do put time into creating social media posts and, and putting yourself out there. And ultimately, what it comes down to is, you're trying to convey your message and you're trying to help people. At least that's for me, when I post on social media, it's about helping and connecting with my ideal audience. So it stings a little bit. But before we even get to there, I think what's more important, and you kind of touched on this, is identifying what's going to work for you and your business in terms of a social media strategy. So Mm -hmm. can you kind of touch on how you help your clients identify the strategy for them and their particular business? Um, Well, the first thing we do actually is we start with a manifesto because I don't like the phrase mission statement. I think, you know, Ouch! Kate just called me out on my own show. That's okay. It's okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't like it because I feel like every, every company has a mission statement that says why their floor wax is good for the world or whatever. So they all suck. I know. 
I'm looking for something a little more revolutionary, a little like a stronger point of view. And so the very first project, when people come to my 30 day sprint program, the very first project they do is to write a manifesto. And um, I mean, some people have a little trouble with it. We eventually get there, but I want people showing up with a really strong point of view. Cause I mean, let's be honest, how many people are out there who do the same thing you do or I do? I mean, but yeah. why are they coming to you or why are they coming to me? It's because you're you and I'm me, right? Exactly. Yeah, so we definitely wanna start there. But also um, I think, I mean, just on, on a practical level, first of all, because of something you said, I want to remind you that a post you do, if you post it a particular day at a particular time, it can do X in terms of results. You can post the same post at a different time on the same platform. It'll do differently. It might do better. You can post the same post on a different platform. It can do drastically better. For one of my clients, I... I made like the silliest little reel, like a super, not very awesome, but it was fine. Like short video. I posted it one day on YouTube and we had 10,000 views within an hour and wow. posted it another day on Instagram. And I think we've only gotten like 600 views altogether. So like, you just don't know. That's so, so crazy. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and I'll repost that on Instagram and then it could do dr drastically differently the second time. You just don't really know. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's super interesting because that actually just happened to me last night. I was, I'm, I'm in a content stretch right now where I've committed to posting at least one reel a day on, on all platforms. I just copy and paste the same one, but mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's seven 30 or something at night. I didn't create anything new. I was like, let me just scroll back a little bit and repost something. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally word for word, like downloaded the video, reposted it, copied the caption, reposted it. And it got like four times the reach as the original one, mm -hmm. which also made me go a little bit crazy. So you're saying I shouldn't go crazy. I should just chill out. <laughs> yes. Okay. But also we can, you know, if we think in terms of our process, I think what a lot of people are doing and what I would want to ask you with, um, you're posting a reel a day. Are you making one reel each day and then posting it each day? Because like, if I were to tell you that when I do the laundry, I wash a shirt and I dry the shirt and I hang up the shirt and I put it in my closet and I wash a pair of jeans and I dry the jeans and I fold them and put them away, you'd tell me I was nuts, right? People so, don't do that? Wait, hang on. You just revolutionized my laundry too and my social media in the same episode. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think this is the way most people are doing social media. So really, if we can get more into monotasking, and this is how I work in my program, this is how I work with all of my clients, we create a series of core messages that we want to convey to the world. And then we create the content that comes off of those. And depending on the client, that could be visual first or words first. It depends on the person. And then we batch schedule them. So we work in chunks to make as much as humanly possible in a really, really smart way. Mm, I love this. And um, I agree. I, I totally agree. I usually do batch schedule. Let's just say something came up this week and I did not have a chance to plan out my social media for this week, but I'm still, I was committed to, um, to posting a real day. I didn't want to drop the ball. So we're back on track as of today, but okay. that's, that's really good advice. Cause that, that actually held me up in the beginning. I think of my, my early days on social media and it was like design content and create it and film it and edit it all in the same day. And I was burnt out after like three minutes. I don't even think I made a video at that point. Yeah. And, and if we can so also be really, know. yeah. And if we can be smart with the content, like the things we shoot, the things we take video of and arranging them smartly, like keeping them organized, keeping your assets organized, then you'll have like this growing library that you can work from. And one thing can turn into a lot of things. So the more content you make, the more content you have. Mm, yes. That's, that's gold right there. I want to dive into, what did you call it? A content tree? What was the word you used? Uh, a content loop? No, it was uh, about creating your, oh, your messaging. What did you, what did you call it in terms of your brand messaging? And then oh, I, core, messages? core messages. Core messages. Okay. Yeah. So how are you, 
how are you creating that with your clients? I'm, I'm really curious, like what are those core messages? Where are they coming from? And then also on the backside of that is how do you use them to create new and different content, but still be on that same messaging topic? Okay. So um, in my program, I mean, we start with a lot of foundation work where we start with like the manifesto, we start with audience research, we start with audience language research. So we know exactly the words that our audience is using. And so we can say those same words back to them, you know, or teach them our language if, if that's the case. And so um, I actually created like this magic spreadsheet where it asks you a bunch of questions and then according to the answers you've already created like in your manifesto in um, your audience research and all that stuff you start filling out the answers to those questions and then my spreadsheet actually automatically builds your social media plan for you it's a it's a social media plan of 70 posts it's a content loop so let's say like my example that i use is like let's pretend i have a yoga studio okay and my first core message is yoga is for everybody. So let's say the first time I hit yoga is for everybody, I'm talking about um, body positivity. I'm saying, you know, you don't have to be like a skinny little yogini. Like that's not what we're about. We're body positive, like come as you are. So the first time I hit that, I'm looking at it from body positivity, but the second time I hit it, I might be looking at it from another angle and I get to decide at that point, am I changing um, the text that I used? Am I changing the graphic I used? Am I changing how it's presented? Or am I changing completely like the angle at which I'm looking at that thing? So the second time around, I might decide um, that I'm looking at it like yoga is not just for like young people, yoga's for all ages. I could bring the perspective of, we have classes for seniors. The third time I look at it, I could be saying, if you have um, an injury or, or a disability or concerns, you know, we can adapt the, the class to your needs, like, and we're there to help you do it. So the, I ask kind of purposely vague questions to make people bring their own angle to it. And then we start playing with that and we start adjusting the messages to make sure that they're saying all the things they need to say to their audience. That is so cool. There is now only one thing I love more than spreadsheets and that's magic spreadsheets, which mm -hmm. I didn't know existed. So that's fantastic. But on this magic spreadsheet, with all these variables, like how many different potential messages do your clients create? It sounds like thousands. Well, I mean, the core messages, there's a list of 70. Yeah, but and then out of those 70 with all the different variables, I mean, yeah, it's endless. It is endless. I mean, because That's each crazy. post, you can be looking at it from so many different angles and presenting it different ways. There is really like infinite posts that you can make just from that list. That is, that is so cool. So I, I have to just toss this on the screen. I have your website here. You have a download on your website. Can you tell me a little bit about what's on there? Because the next question I was going to ask you is what's the first step? Like, how do we get started? But I, I think a lot of it's going to be right there. So kategilbert.com. But can you tell me a little bit about this, this free download you have? So my download is called the Content Creation Roadmap. And what I actually do is I walk you through from an idea of a post you want to make through creating that post, um, doing photography if you need to, doing it the absolute smartest way possible. So you get, if you are taking the time, let's say you're a pr product photographer, you know, or um, you, you're selling a product and you need to take a picture of a product. So I make sure that you get every single thing, or if it's about you, that you're getting every single useful piece of video or photo you can create that can be used vertically, horizontally, as a square, you know, that kind of thing. And then taking it, taking you through the process of making it, posting it, and then how do you repurpose it from there? And I, it's, I keep, people keep telling me I should stop giving it away, but I, I was just going to say that now. that's, that's crazy. So, and you get emails from me for a few days where I'm really like holding your hand, giving you baby steps, making sure that you're good to go that's that's insane honestly and i was i was gonna tell you the same thing i won't but i also i respect that i i love that you give so much value up front because 
the next thing I was going to say, just skip that. Go right to your 30-day sprint. I mean, if, if that's what you're going to get from the free thing, you might as well just go all in and have your content simplified to the max. I love that. So, okay. If someone decides to completely ignore everything you've just said and all the value you put out there because they're just a little dumb for some reason, what would you say to this person? Like, What is the next thing they can do today to start optimizing their social media and, and putting some sort of content out to test the message? Well, because most people just don't show up and that's the main problem I see people have, they just don't show up or they're not showing up consistently. So um, I would say, keep in mind, you know, for example, there's this shoe brand I really love. I've never bought shoes from them. Their shoes are like $400, but I love them. I will eventually buy shoes from this brand. Um, I found them a million years ago, like on Pinterest or something. Like, I don't even think Instagram existed at that point. <laughs> and, and I still follow them. And yes, I go to their website occasionally. And yes, I get their email. But how do I still remember this many years later that this shoe brand exists, that they make these beautiful shoes that I want? It's because I see them on social media. Mm. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's such a waste of time. Um, I have a website. Okay, great. But how often is somebody going to type in the name of your website and go visit your website versus if they're idly scrolling, how often are they potentially going to see you? So I'd say, first of all, just show up, like see what happens. If you can show up like with a sense of play and kind of like experiment with your posts and try to have fun with it. Um, and I know it's not always fun. I mean, I do my own posts. I don't have somebody doing them for me. Sometimes I hear people say like, I hear people give similar advice, but I know they've got a whole team of people creating their posts for them. I'll tell you, like, I put my money where my mouth is. I'm doing all my own posts. So um, just show up and see what you can do in a way that feels good to you, that's doable to you without, you know, getting up in your head about it. And if the problem you have is just showing up in the first place, um, keep in mind, nobody actually is probably judging you as harshly as you think they are. I hear a lot of people say to me, like, I'm just really embarrassed, or I feel like I don't want to show my face, or I feel really shy about showing up. And in fact, you know, they have this story in their head that other people are looking at them and other people are judging them. In fact, for the most part, like I like to, to give the example of a junior high lunchroom. I mean, the thoughts you had in junior high, of course, or even high school were like, is my shirt cool enough? Is my haircut stupid? Is Becky looking at me? You know, like all those feelings. And in reality, those are the same things we're doing to ourselves all the time online. In reality, Becky's not looking at me. And if anything, there are more people out there rooting for you than you think they are. Like, like there really are so many people out there who, who want to see you succeed because it means they could too. So... I am all sorts of triggered with that analogy, but I'm going to get over it. I'm going to not remember junior high. <laughs> it's a good, it's a very good analogy. And you're right. Nobody's judging you. I'm judging you if you don't go download Kate's freebie at kategilbert.com. It's in the show notes if you're listening and not watching. But um, that is that is a ton, a ton of value. And I agree with you. It's just show up and be consistent. That was that was my motto for all of last year with everything I did, because I, I noticed that in myself was the stopping and starting, stopping and starting. And I said, no, just be consistent, be persistent and good things will happen. And they did. And this year I've been able to layer on instead of posting one post a day, I actually put out 50 pieces of content per day across oh, wow. the five different platforms. And I too do it by myself. I have found a way to, and not go crazy, which is, I think the important part, not the message we're sending with this podcast. Don't hear me say that. All I'm saying is Kate is 100% right. And this is mm -hmm. very, very valuable information. If you do a little bit each day, you'd be surprised where that gets you in just a short amount of time. And I think the more you make, the easier it is. I gave yeah. myself a challenge um, of doing 100 days straight. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, my 100 days just ended last week. I did miss a couple days when I was really busy and I was traveling, but for the most part, like other than those two days, I did a hundred days straight. And I got to say, when I got to the end of it, I was like, 
this is no big deal. Like, it's not that big a deal. I can keep doing this. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, I, we already gave you Kate's website for the freebie. Kate, this has been a, a phenomenal episode. So many gold nuggets. Go back and re-listen. If you're watching or listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe. Thank you for joining us. I love thank having you, you for here. having me. And oh, you're so welcome. And thank you for thank you for shedding this light on on my audience here. I usually don't ask this question, but I feel like it's kind of relevant for this episode. Uh, what is your favorite platform to post on and where can we follow you so we can see how you do this for yourself? Uh, Instagram is my place right now. So I've I've considered trying TikTok. I let, I'm, I'm an, a TikTok observer at this okay. point, but I really enjoy it as an observer. But I'm, I'm an Instagram person and I'm Kate G.I., the first two letters of my last name. That's awesome. TikTok is a scary place. Um, if you figure it out, please let me know. But I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is. But it's kind of like junior high lunchroom. That's, that's how be. I feel about TikTok. It might be the junior high lunchroom, like a very chaotic one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this was so much fun. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for listening, watching, subscribing, commenting, all the things. We'll see you on the next Harmonious at Lunch for more bite-sized business advice. See you there.